I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar and this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, leelaya. Vishvesham satchidanandam, vandeham yokhilan jagat. Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, leelaya. We are dealing with the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the major types of samasas in Sanskrit. Avyayi bhava, tatpurusha, bahuvrihi and dvandva are the four major types of samasas in Sanskrit. Tatpurusha samasa occupies an important place amongst these four as it is one of the most uh, productive samasas. It also has number of subtypes which no other samasa in Sanskrit has. Also the number of sutras composed by Panini in order to explain the Tatpurusha samasa are quite a few in comparison with the other samasas in Sanskrit, be it Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra or Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra or Samasa Swara Vidhayaka Sutra. There are quite a few sutras which deal with the Tatpurusha Samasa variety than the other three. The formation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be put in the form of a simple equation as shown below. If we have two entities X and Y and they have independent and separate status in terms of their meaning primarily and also their word form and also most importantly the accent the important point is that these two independent entities are interlinked by meaning. And so the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge them together and bring out an output in the form of XY. Now XY is one entity with one meaning and one word form and also one accent. The important thing about Tatpurusha Samasa is that in this one entity there is Y which is the second member of the compound which is an Uttarapada assumes the position of the head of the compound. What it implies is that when XY as a one unit is related to other words in the sentence, this interrelation will happen only through Y. And X will not be interrelated with any other external member without going through Y. This is the implication. This Samasa also is characterized as others by Ekarthi Bhava which has got three features which we mentioned earlier namely Aikarthya, Aikapadya and Aikaswarya. 
we then studied the sub varieties of the tatpurusha samasa vibhakti tatpurusha being the first one then comes karma dharaya then we also studied the ekadeshi samasa followed by nay tatpurusha samasa then we studied the pradi tatpurusha samasa and now we are studying the gati tatpurusha samasa this samasa is stated by a2218 kugatik pradaya the meaning of this sutra is the following kugatik pradaya consists of one word kugatik pradaya which is prathama bahuvachana which means the word ku the words termed gati and the words grouped as pradis words continued are sup and sahasupa as well as samartha padavidhihi and nityam so the meaning of the sutra is any subanta whose pratipadika zar ku the words termed gati and the words grouped as pradis is always compounded with any other interrelated subanta this is the meaning this is a nitya samasa of asvapada vigraha type the purpose of the term gati is twofold in order to demarcate an accent or swara and also shatva natva abhava and also this compound namely gati tatpurusha compound now the term gati is primarily assigned to pradis when linked to an action denoted by the verbal root this is stated by the sutra gatischa and we have already studied this sutra and then also to some other words stated in the section from 1460 onwards up to 79 all these elements are termed gati now we have the next sutra which also states the gati saudnya we have already studied the sutras from 1460 up to 69 in the previous lectures now adaha anupadeshe what this means is that when preaching others is not the sense anupadeshe the word adaha is termed gati so when we have the meaning after having done this when this is to be expressed what it means is that etat kartavyam iti svayam alochya so adaha is that and adaha kritya means after having done this and so etat kartavyam this is to be done is thought about by one's own self one is not preaching somebody to do something so adakritya is the gati samasa with adaha as the purva pad because kugati pradaya is the word in the prathama vibhakti similarly action of doing this and if this is the meaning to be conveyed we can have adaha getting the gati saudnya and then adakritam will be the finally derived compound output called gati samasa adakritam etat kartavyam iti svayam alochya so there is no upadesha so anupadeshe is the semantic condition broad semantic environment and in this environment adahat is term gati the next sutra stating the gati saudnya is tiraha antardhau tiruvantardhau this is 1471 so the word is tiras and antardhau is 71 laying down the semantic condition so in the sense of antardhi antardhi means intervention or disappearance so in this sense the word tiras is termed gati 
the one stirrhosis term gati will have the compound after having disappeared or after having intervened will have the compound tiras will have the compound tiro bhuya where we have tiras plus su plus bhu plus tva plus su and then su is deleted and tva is substituted by lyap so we get tiras plus bhuya and then sa becomes suru ru becomes u and then there is guna and so we have tiro bhuya similarly something disappeared and in this sense we'll have the compound tiro bhutam this is a gati samas where tiras is termed gati next we have the sutra vibhasha kri 1472 this sutra means that in the sense of intervention or disappearance the word tiras is termed gati optionally if the verbal root kru follows immediately vibhasha kri so when the meaning is after having made to disappear we can get the form tiraskritya or tirahakritya and an optional form of tiraskritva as well as tirahakritva now there are two options one option is the option between a samasa and a non samasa sentence so so that option is shown by these two pairs tiraskritya and tirahakritya is the pair of examples of samasa and tiraskritva and tirahakritva is a pair of examples of the vakya or the sentence this is done by the gati saudnya that tiras gets because of the present sutra vibhasha krai once tiras gets the gati saudnya there is samasa that takes place because of kugati pradaya and then we get the two examples tiraskritya and tirahakritya when tiras does not get gati saudnya then there is no compound there is vakya tiraskritva and tirahakritva now the substitute sa in place of visarga is optionally stated by the sutra tirasonya tarasyam 8343 and therefore we get these two forms tiraskritya and tirahakritya as well as tiraskritva and tirahakritva similarly when the meaning is something made to disappear we get the two forms tiraskritam which is a compound form and tirahakritam which is the non compounded vakya form tiraskritam and tirahakritam again in this set of examples the substitute sa in place of a visarga is optionally stated by the sutra tirasonya tarasyam the next sutra is upajayan vajay 1473 these these this sutra consists of two words upaje and anvaje and in the sense of empowering the weak durbalasya samarthya dhanam the words upaje and anvaje are termed gati optionally if verbal root kru follows immediately so the words vibhasha kri continue in this particular sutra stating the gati saudnya to upaje and anvaje in the sense of the durbalasya samarthya dhanam so now when the meaning is after having empowered the weak the samasa will take place and we'll have the finally derived compound output upajekritya 
upaje will be termed gati and then there will be kugati pradaya applying so gati samasa taking place so we have upaje kritya as a compounded output and upaje kritva as the non compounded vakya which will express the same sense similarly anvaje kritya because empowering the weak is the sense so anvaje kritya will be the compounded form and anvaje kritva will be the sentence or vakya level form the next sutra is sakshat prabhruti nicha 1474 giving gati saudnya to the words sakshat etc what this sutra means is that the group of words that begins with sakshat are termed gati optionally if the verbal root kru follows immediately i repeat the group of words that begins with sakshat are termed gati optionally if verbal root kru follows immediately there is a statement in the tradition which adds the meaning in this particular sutra it says sakshat prabhrutishu chvyartha vachanam the meaning intended is that of the suffix chvi which is abhuta tadbhav something coming into being which was not there earlier sakshat prabhrutishu chvyartha vachanam so the meaning is after having made something in front of eyes that is sakshat karoti now we have sakshat plus su plus kru plus tva plus su and su gets deleted so you have sakshat plus zero plus kru plus tva plus zero and then tva gets substituted by lepu that is sakshat kru ya plus zero and sakshat plus zero plus then augment the gets added to the verbal root kru so we have sakshat plus zero plus krut plus ya plus zero and so the finally derived output in the form of a compound is sakshat krutya and when the compound does not take place we have sakshat krutva this means after having made something in front of eyes sakshat krutya even though sakshat kritya and sakshat kritva uh, have both the words written in a joint manner the point is that in sakshat kritya because of the compound tva is substituted by lep and in sakshat kritva that is not the case so even though they are joined sakshat kritva are two independent words whereas sakshat kritya there is only one word samasa sakshat prabhruti ni consists of following words we have sakshat or mithya and also bhadra lochana vibhasha etc similarly you have lavanam ushnam shitam ardram etc also you have pradus namas and avis and then you can get the form mithya kritya as compounded output or mithya kritva the sentential output similarly namas kritya and namas kritva namas kritya is the is the samasa and namas kritva is the sentence the next sutra we have is anatya dhana urasi manasi 1475 what this means is that in the sense of non association the words urasi and manasi are termed gati optionally if the verbal root kru follows immediately anatya dhane urasi manasi in the sense of non association so when the meaning is after having hypothesized or after having decided 
where there is non association because urasi and manasi these are the locative singulars of uras and manas so urasi and manasi means on the chest as well as on the mind indicating that there is some association uras is the substratum of something manas is the substratum of something this association of being a substratum is not intended as the meaning by the speaker and this is the environment where this sutra functions in this sense urasi and manasi they get gati saudhnya and as a result kugati pradaya applies and gati samasa takes place so after having hypothesized or after having decided is the meaning and you get the compounded output in the form of urasi kritya and the sentence would be urasi kritva what this means is abhyupagamya after having hypothesized similarly manasi kritya and manasi kritva meaning nishchitya after having decided so manasi kritya and urasi kritya they undergo the same process as described in the previous slide and the compound output is generated the next sutra is madhya pade nivachane cha which is 1476 also in the sense of non association that is anatyadhane the words madhye pade and nivachane nivachane is absence of statement or termed gati optionally if the verbal root kru follows immediately so if you have the meaning after having intervened we can get the compound form madhye kritya you can also have the sentence madhye kritva similarly if you have the meaning after having stepped the compound form derived would be pade kritya and the samasa is generated in accordance with the procedure laid down earlier whose example was also shown a previous in before a few slides and the vakya would be pade kritva also when the meaning is after having controlled the speech vacham niyamya when this is to be expressed you get the compounded form nivachane kritya where twa is substituted by lep and then there is tuk augment so the form generated is nivachane kritya and the sentence would be nivachane kritva similarly nityam haste panam upayamane is the next sutra 1477 this sutra means in the sense of marriage or upayamana or dara karma the words haste and panau are always termed gati if verbal root kru follows immediately so the words haste as well as panau they are termed gati and then kugati pradaya takes place and there is this nitya samasa so after having married is the meaning that is to be conveyed and so the compound output haste kritya as well as panau kritya is generated where kthwa is substituted by lep and then there is augment tuk that is added and so you get the forms haste kritya and panau kritya the next sutra stating the gati saudhnya is pradvam bandhane this is 1478 this means in the sense of binding which is bandhana the word pradvam is always termed gati if verbal root kru follows immediately what this means is after having made favorable by binding if this is the meaning to be conveyed then we have pradvam as the gati and then kugati pradaya applies and so gati samasa takes place and so we derive the samasa in the normal procedure 
So we have pradvam plus su plus kru plus tva plus su. Su is deleted. Then tva is substituted by lepu. Then there is augment tuk that is added. And so we get the form pradvam kratya. Which means after having made favorable by binding. The next sutra 1479 is Jivika Upanishada Vaupamye. Jivika and Upanishadu Upanishad in the sense of Aupamya are termed as Gati and then Kugati Pradayaha takes place. What this sutra means is that in the sense of comparison based on similarity, the words Jivika and Upanishad are always termed Gati if verbal root Kru follows immediately. So Jivika means Jivanopayaha, means of living, and Upanishad means Rahasyam or Vedanta Janyam Jnanam or Vedanta Bhago Va, secret knowledge generated by the end of the Veda portion. Now, when these two words Jivika and Upanishad are used in the sense of similarity, comparison based on similarity, then these two words are termed Gati, when verbal root Kru follows. So if you have the meaning, after having made something like the means of living, so you have Jivika and so you have Jivika Kritya as the finally derived compound output where the procedure of the compounding is followed and supratyaya is deleted and twice substituted by lepu and then tuk augment is added and so you get jivika kritya as the finally derived compound output. Similarly, after having made something like the secret knowledge, in this particular sense, one can derive the compound output in the form of Upanishad Kritya. The same procedure is followed. Upanishad and Jivika in these senses get Gati Saudhnya. So Kugati Pradayaha applies. Samasa Saudhnya applies. Pratipadika Saudhnya applies. Supadhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies. Then Tva Pratyaya is substituted by Lepu. Then Tuk Augment is added. And finally we get the form Upanishad Kritya as the compound output. To summarize, the term Gati is assigned to many specific words which denote specific meanings. In this particular section from 1460 up to 1479, when these words undergo operations like compounding as well as accent. Compounding is stated by Kugati Pradayaha and accent is stated by, for example, Gati Karako Papadat Krit, that is 62139. And this will determine the accent on the Uttarabada in many of these cases. Also important to remember here that the words which get the term Gati do not denote meanings by themselves. They function to bring to the fore the meaning of the associated verbal root. So they are also called as Dyotaka. Thank you very much for your patience.